June 2008, summer vacation, I decided to visit the Ainu people of Sapporo, Japan, a race whose proud ancestors populated even the Americas, and traveled to Hokkaido, the Ainu's last refuge in Japan. During the major restoration starting in 1868, Japanese policies became increasingly aimed at erasing the identity of the Ainu people. Just as it would happen in Korea, the Japanese outlawed the native Ainu language, forced them to use Japanese names, redistributed their lands to Japanese farmers, and restricted them to farming on government-provided plots, and even enslaved them to labor in the Japanese fishing industry. As the Japanese government encouraged immigration of ethnic Japanese to populate Hokkaido, the Ainu became increasingly marginalized in their own land. The population was greatly reduced due to hardship and diseases introduced by the immigrant Japanese. Even the name of the Ainu's land was changed. The island of Hokkaido was called Ezo or Ezochi, but the name was changed to Hokkaido during the major restoration as part of the program to unify the Japanese national character under the ages of the emperor, thus reducing the local identity and autonomy of the different regions of Japan. Today, only 50,000 Ainu remain. The rest were slaughtered during the Meiji Restoration or went into hiding afterwards for the Ainu could no longer stand the persecution. On June 6, 2008, the Japanese parliament finally recognized the Ainu's persecution, the result of the UN's direct intervention against Japan's policy against the Ainu. <coughs> the Ainu tongue is disappearing. The language of the ancients is dying. Strangled by the children of the sun, only the weak, the old, those who are too feeble to shout out are left speaking the Ainu language. As the young's umbilical cord is severed by the rifles and swords of the children of the sun. As stronger nations invade and pillage the weaker, but beautiful people, not only are lives lost, but history and color that makes humanity that much more beautiful disappears also. Not only in Japan, but in China, the Amazon, Africa, Central Asia, and Oceania, the stronger mount the weaker, pinion them, and strangle them, torturing them until they betray the pride of their independent ancestors. Like an infection spreading throughout the body, the peaceful disappear, and the violent but strong are left searching for more victims. Thousands of years of history and culture disappear like a leaf lost in the currents of a mighty river. I wonder what I can do to preserve the heritage of the oppressed. For while we may have different origins, we all share the same nature, humanity. I do not know what I can do at this very moment to secure safety, the continuance of the livelihood of the world's oppressed people. But I am certain of one thing. Truth will eventually prevail. And then, one day, the Pekchok, the Nashi, and the Ainu can speak freely and live freely. One day a person will come along whose sympathy goes beyond the borders for the confinement of ethnic allegiance and restore history in the name of truth rather than calculate a purpose. When enough such people gather, lost identities will be found as children start to recognize their mothers again. Until the spirits of the meek reawakens in the jubilance, my journey shall continue throughout the sacred annals of history. <laughs>